Okay, as advertised, today, this video specifically is going to be talking about equations of lines in space. All right, so let me get to the, uh, the screen. All right, there we go, video being shared. So let's suppose that L is a line in R3, R3 space, passing through the point P denoted by X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Let's let V be the vector ABC and suppose that's a vector parallel to L. Then for any point Q on the line, call it XYZ, we know that the vector PQ is gonna be parallel to V. We can see this visually in figure 2.63 from the textbook reproduced in your notes. Two vectors are going to be parallel if and only if they have either the same direction or opposite direction. So it must be true that vector PQ is some constant multiple of vector V for some scalar T. So what do we have then? Well, vector PQ, as we know, is going to be x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, and that has to equal t times our vector a, b, c. So on the left, right, this is really x, y, z, that vector minus x naught, y naught, z naught, Mega eraser. Oh. Pardon me while we have some technical difficulties. Uh, now, as I was saying, uh, minus the vector x not y not z not is equal to t times a b c. And we can solve for vector x y z. And set that equal to x naught y naught z naught plus t times our vector a b c. If we define the vector x y z and call it r and call the vector x naught y naught z naught r naught, and since a b c was v, we're going to obtain the equation of the line. Uh, specifically, well, we have the equation of the line, we're going to obtain what's known as the vector equation of a line. So R is equal to R naught plus T times V. All right, so for that to be true, the components of the vectors on both sides have to be equal. So in other words, um, if I combine the two vectors on the right, if I have X, Y, Z, equaling the vector, well, what's on the page. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna get the, the X components have to be equal. The Y components on both sides have to be equal and the Z components on both sides have to be equal. And that gives us what are known as parametric equations of the line. Finally, assuming that a, b, and c are not zero, we can solve for t, right? So that'll give us x minus x naught over a is equal to t, y minus y naught over b is equal to t, z minus z naught over c is equal to t, and since everything's equal to t, they must be equal to each other, which gives us our third representation of a line known as the symmetric equations of a line. And so those are the three equations of the line. Note that we might, might just as easily choose the direction vector to be the vector v, right? So in other words, we can find the direction vector and that's v. Okay, note that the parametric and symmetric equations of a line are not unique because they depend uh, upon the choice of the line, of the point on the line. They depend on, on the choice of point on the line and on the vector V. So let's do an example. Let's find the parametric and symmetric equations of the line passing through one, zero, one and negative two, one, two. All right, so first let's find a vector parallel to the line. I'm going to use the logical choice, which is the direction vector. Well, I don't know if it's the logical choice, but it's the easy choice. 
because how do we find the direction vector? Well, this we've done before, right? V is gonna be the vector whose components are gonna be negative two minus one, one zero, and two minus one, also known as the vector negative three, one, one. Okay, now choose a point on the line. I personally am going to choose the first point. Why not? I'm going to use one, zero, one. Okay, so um, there you go. Uh, so the parametric equations x equals the x component of our point plus the x component of v times t, so 1 minus 3t. y is, well, we have 0 plus 1 times t. And last but not least, z is going to be 1 plus 1 times t, or 1 plus t. Those are our parametric equations. Solving for t. And that will give us the symmetric equations. Awesome. So we're going to get that uh, x minus 1 over negative 3 is equal to t, but that's equal to y, which is also equal to z minus 1. And there you go, the equation of a line. Now, how do we obtain the equation of a line segment? Oh, all we have to do is limit the values of the parameter. So let's suppose that we have two points, P and Q on a line, and you know, get the associated position vectors of those points. We'll call those vector P and vector Q. Let's use P as our known point on the line, and our direction vector for the line is gonna be the, the vector PQ, so we'll use that as our parallel vector V. So in vector form, right, that means that we have R is going to equal little p, which is our vector p, plus t times this direction vector pq. Okay, so that p is the vector x naught, y naught, z naught, plus t times, we got the direction vector already, so let's plug the components in. And if we do a wee bit of algebra, right, we can write this as 1 minus t, x naught, y naught, z naught, plus t times x1, y1, z1. Or in other words, we have r is 1 minus t times the vector p plus t times the vector q. Excellent. All right, so the line passing through P and Q is, is, um, is given by that, right? We just got it. R is 1 minus T times P plus T times Q. Now, how do we obtain the line segment between P and Q? We just have to figure out what the limits are on T. But we see that when T is equal to 0, when we plug in T equals 0 to that equation, then we obtain R is equal to P. Okay, so we're on the, at the point P. And when T is equal to one, our, our direction vector is equal to the position vector for Q. Whoa, so we're at the point Q. Therefore, the vector equation of the line segment between P and Q is going to be, well, that thing that we're now writing for the third time. And we're gonna use the limits t greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. Now, if I'd like to obtain the parametric equations, then I'm just gonna substitute in for r, p, and q, the component forms of the vectors and equate the components. And if I do that, if I equate the x component, I'm gonna get x equals um, x naught plus t times x1 minus x naught. Uh, y is equal to y naught plus t times 
y1 minus y naught and z is equal to z naught plus t times z1 minus z naught for t greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. Let's see if I can move that over and make it look a little bit nicer because I'm sure that's what you care about right now. But I'm a little OCD, so apologies. All right, that's a little nicer. Okay, so that's how you find the equation of a line. Next question is, how do I find the distance between a point and a line? Because that's something I like to do. Now check this out, we're gonna use stuff that we already know. We may also use vectors to find the distance between a point M and a line L. Let's suppose L is a line passing through P conveniently shown in figure 2.65 of the textbook reproduced here. So we have this line L passing through P and let's suppose V is its direction vector or a direction vector. Um, let's let M be a point not on L, as you can see pictured here, and we're gonna form the vector PM. And this now we will use to form a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are gonna be that vector V and the, the vector PM. Now the distance from M to L is, we just drop a perpendicular from, from point M to the line, and we'll denote that by D, but that's also the height of our parallelogram. So from what we've studied previously, we know that the area of a parallelogram, that parallelogram in specific, is gonna equal the magnitude of, um, it sure is, it's gonna equal the magnitude of the cross product of the vectors making the, the adjacent sides, but that's also equal by um, geometry to the, the length of the, let's say base, which is the magnitude of V times the height, which is D. And we can just solve for D and we get D is the um, magnitude of that cross product divided by the magnitude of V. And that's all there is to it. So let's do an example. Uh, no, let's not. Um, yeah, let's do an example. So here we go. Let's determine the relationship between the lines L1 and L2 um, given up there. So the first thing I wanna do is I need to write my, what am I doing? I totally skipped the example. Sorry, let's try that one more time. Let's find the distance between the point 425 and the line with parametric equations, x equals negative one minus t, y equals negative t, z is equal to two. So first thing I wanna do is find a point p on the line. Well, that's pretty straightforward. What we're just gonna do is we're just gonna let t equal zero and if we do that, I'm gonna get the point, um, let's see, negative one, negative one, two. Next, um, what is my ray, PA? So PA is the vector whose components are four minus one, two minus negative one, uh, two minus, no, five minus two, sorry, which is three, three, three. What did I do wrong? Oh, snap. P is four minus negative one. That P is supposed to be a negative one there. Whoops. As you can see, I make mistakes too. So four minus negative one. All right, so that should be a five, three, three, not a three, three, three. Oopsie, I think. Or did I do something else wrong? No, two plus one is still three. Oh, wait. Oh, when t equals zero. Wow. 
Let's start that problem over. Sorry about that. So let's let t equal zero, and that gives my point p. Let's see if I can plug in t equals zero now. Negative one, zero, two. There we go. So my vector p a, this is going to be the last example for this recording. And then the next recording, we will talk about relationship between lines and equations of, of planes and one more little topic. It's going to be sort of a little potpourri, shall we say. Okay, uh, let's see. So here we go. Um, PA is the vector whose components are 4 minus negative 1, 2 minus 0, and 5 minus 2, giving us 5, 2, 3. So we have the vector 5, 2, 3. Excellent. All right, now what? Now um, we need the direction vector V. So our direction vector V is just grabbed from looking at our equations of the lines of the coefficients of T. So I have negative one, negative one and zero because there is no T term for our Z. All right, finally, I compute the cross product of those vectors. So that's the determinant um, whose first matrix, whose first row are our unit vectors. The second row is the vector uh, PA, the components of that. So I have five, two, three. And the third row are the components of V, negative one, one, zero. And so knowledge of how to find the determinant, right? We get the determinant of the matrix with rows two, three, one, negative two, three, negative one, zero times I minus, minus the determinant of the matrix whose rows are going to be uh, five, three, negative one, zero times J. plus the determinant of matrix whose rows are five, two, negative one, one, and that's times K. So we get the quantity two times zero minus negative one times three times I minus the quantity five times zero minus negative one times three times J plus the quantity five times negative one minus negative one times two times K. Okay, well that just gives us uh, three I minus three J minus three K. Okay, so the magnitude of that is what we need. That's just going to be the square root of three squared plus negative three squared plus negative three squared, which gives me three root three. And the magnitude of V is the other component thing that I need. It's actually the last thing I need. That's just going to be the square root of, uh, let's see, where was V? Uh, negative one squared plus negative one squared plus zero squared, which is equal to square root of two. Excellent. And so the distance then D is equal to the uh, quotient of those two.
So I have three root three divided by root two in technology grand. And we rationalize this. So the three has square root of six. All righty. So I'm going to stop here. I know you're dying to find out about relationships between lines, but I'm dying to try to figure out what's going on here. So uh, I'm going to stop recording anyway. This was long enough. And have a great day.